The diagnosis and treatment of, of breast cancer, thankfully, has progressed incredibly rapidly over the past 10 to 20 years, as opposed to some of the other more common tumors, such as lung cancer, brain tumors, et cetera, that uh, have, have not had uh, some of the advances that we have seen in breast cancer. One of the interesting questions is, where will breast cancer treatment, prevention, and diagnosis be in the next five or 10 years? There was an interesting study presented about a year ago that taking aromatase inhibitors will decrease a woman's future risk of breast cancer by about 65%. This is in uh, normal postmenopausal women. Obviously, this would have to be something that the family practitioners, gynecologists, and internists would need to do. That is probably one of the biggest holdups in that these physicians are already doing probably many more things than they feel comfortable doing and adding another drug like an aromatase inhibitor and managing the side effects uh, may, may be more than they wish to take on. But in any event, there is data now that there is a drug that uh, ought to be considered certainly in higher risk women that will decrease their risk of breast cancer by at least half. From the diagnosis point of view, mammography remains the gold standard. There are a number of other mammographic techniques, MRI techniques, radionuclide techniques, that is uh, radiation um, or, or nuclear medicine techniques that may make uh, breast diagnosis better. These are all in the experimental phase and uh, some such as tomosynthesis uh, are nearing levels that uh, will be available quite soon and may be somewhat better than a digital mammogram. One of the most interesting concepts is the concept of neoadjuvant treatment, meaning that we give either chemotherapy or hormone therapy prior to the time of definitive surgery and what people are looking at are multiple biopsies to ascertain the response to whatever treatment one starts with. In other, ones, in other words, one might do a biopsy, look at the pathways of the cancer, choose a certain therapy, and re-biopsy the cancer two to four weeks later and get a feel for whether that cancer is responding to that particular treatment by looking at pathways that have either been activated or non-activated, or look at proliferation markers such as KI-67 to see whether that particular treatment slowed down the growth of the cancer. In that way, prior to definitive surgical therapy, we may be able to change treatments that result in a higher cure rate. One of the interesting radiotherapy techniques is a concept developed in Milan, Italy of intraoperative radiation therapy. There are now a number of studies looking at intraoperative radiation therapy at the time of lumpectomy, either as a boost or probably in the next five to 10 years as the entire radiotherapy treatment. That would mean that a woman who chose to have a lumpectomy would have the tumor removed and while in the operating room under anesthesia would have 20 minutes of radiotherapy in the open cavity and be done with radiation therapy and not need to go on to five or six weeks of whole breast radiation. The data so far looks very encouraging and this is certainly a, a trend that will certainly come, come up in the next uh, five years and obviously will make the breast cancer patient's life much, much easier. Other things that are being developed in the HER2 world, that is women with HER2 positive breast cancer, is the idea that some of these women have cancers that are so sensitive to anti-HER2 drugs 
that we may be able to eliminate chemotherapy totally. In other words, a combination of, say, Herceptin plus pertuzumab or TDM1, which are two new anti-HER2 drugs, may be enough to cure the cancer and spare the woman any chemotherapy whatsoever. Those two drugs are probably the two most exciting things on the horizon for breast cancer and certainly for uh, HER2 positive breast cancer. Other things that are being looked at are tumor cell vaccines. There's an anti-HER2 vaccine that looks promising that may be used long-term in patients with HER2 positive breast cancers. Another area of research is the whole idea or the concept of stem cells. Stem cells are thought to be cells that can regenerate the cancer and may be resistant to some chemotherapies. And there are now many places looking at different treatments that will eliminate the stem cell, which may be the ultimate cell that causes recurrence. In the genetics world, it has now been felt that we are only finding or have found about 5% of the families that harbor the BRCA gene and that in the next several years, measurement or analysis for the BRCA gene may become as routine in women with breast cancer as is the estrogen receptor and HER2 new gene analysis. So there are any number of exciting things on the horizon for breast cancer that will individualize therapy and will make some women's treatment much easier who will be cured with less therapy and will be able to pick out the women who need more aggressive therapy and also cure those women. So the exciting, uh, the, the breast cancer future is very exciting and uh, there are any number of things on the horizon that will make the cure rate higher and we hope the treatment easier. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.